Imagine you're on an African safari. You're all smiles as you gaze at the giraffes, zebras, and a lion charging straight towards your open hatch land cruiser. You're filled with panic until the driver steps on the gas and the lion ceases the chase. The famously labeled fight or flight response is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system, known to be active during high stress scenarios, but that's not the only time it's working for you. If you place a small needle-like recording electrode into a bundle of your nerves, like in the picture on your left, you would see that the sympathetic nerves are actually turned on all the time, controlling your blood pressure. Those clusters of electricity spikes in the middle of your screen tell us when your sympathetic nerves are active, and when they are, they can release noradrenaline, which constrict your blood vessels and raise your blood pressure. It protects us from passing out when we stand up or when we exercise. Prior to my PhD thesis, the sympathetic control of blood pressure was understood like the control of lighting in this room. To make the room brighter, turn on more light switches. To raise your blood pressure higher, turn on more sympathetic nerves. But it's more complex than this. In my first series of studies, I decided to zoom in on these nerve signals to identify differently matched, sized, and shaped spikes, like spike A and spike B, which tell us about the activity of single sympathetic nerves. And I've found in young, healthy individuals that the sympathetic nervous system could selectively control these nerves differently from each other. And so each nerve had its own unique response pattern to stress, yet all unified towards a single common goal, that being fine-tuned blood pressure control. So it's not just about making the room brighter. It's about making the brightness just right. And now, what would the consequences be if we lost this ability for fine-tuned control? I recently traveled to Brazil to test how the sympathetic nerves were working in patients with high blood pressure. I found groups of nerves to behave just horribly in response to changes in blood pressure, forcing other nerves to have to work harder to pick up the slack. So it looks like these patients have impairments in subgroups of sympathetic nerves, limiting their ability to control their blood pressure with that fine-tuned precision. Soon I'll be traveling to Japan to test the effects of smoking on the sympathetic nerves in patients with heart failure. It's this research that's moving us forward in understanding how to treat cardiovascular disease, the leading killer in the Western world, better. A shift from treating the heart and blood vessels to actually treating the sympathetic nervous system. So, the next time you're being chased by a lion or giving an outstanding ovation, you know that your sympathetic nerves are continuously at work, fine-tuning your blood pressure to be just right. Thank you.